I'm going to talk to you about superminds. And right now at MIT, I'm working with the Center for Collective Intelligence. And I think you've already learned a bit about collective intelligence listening to uh, these other presentations. So what I'm going to, I'm going to run through very quickly on that, and then I'm going to drill down to some different concepts that I think might be very interesting for you to learn about. Sure, collective intelligence at its finest. <laughs> so intelligence doesn't ha just happen in an individual brain. It actually happens with groups of people too, and groups of people actually have a group IQ. We actually did a study at the Center for Collective Intelligence and found that groups of people working together, groups that had a higher proportion of women than men, were actually more intelligent. Mm. One of my favorite pieces of research. I know, brilliant. So if we think about collective intelligence that way, it's actually been around for a very long period of time groups of people working together. If you think about anything over human history that has been built, it's been built by groups of people. So we have this armies, tribes, companies, families, are all examples of collective intelligence and groups of people working together and building pretty much everything that is created that is our society today. But what's really interesting today now, too, is we have technology that is actually enabling groups of people to be even more intelligent, and almost most importantly, is able, enabling them to connect together in ways that were never before possible. Now, I don't think I need to explain that too much to you because you're here at Crowdsourcing Week, and part of that is harnessing groups of people through technology to make things never before possible. So let me tell you, so Wikipedia is a, very, is a great early example of that, of leveraging the intelligence of groups of people working together. If you show me what you're pushing, I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah, just you're pushing the, the pad. OK, perfect. Go to the next slide. That's great. Awesome. So how will, how will so the, I think a critical question here is around people and machines working together. So we just had two people working together, which is technically a group, and now we're trying to work with machines. So thinking about, let's go back to a critical definition in thinking about groups of people working together, is what is, oh, I see. What are you touching, this? Intelligence, clearly I don't have today, is, is the ability to achieve goals. My goal right there was to advance the slide, and it took a collective to make it happen. But thinking about, so I just want you to have that clear definition of what, when we talk about intelligence, what are we talking about? So what I want to do now is bring some frameworks for you that come from a book called Superminds that was just published at the beginning of the summer from Professor Tom Malone, who is the founder of the Center for Collective Intelligence. So if we go to the next slide. Talking about, and you can click through this whole thing, talking about when we talk about intelligence and honestly the future of work and people and machines working together, what are we talking about? We're all, we're sort of have this wave of AI and a fear around AI. So let's break down that a little bit and talk about what do we mean by intelligence when we're talking about AI. The first thing is specialized intelligence, and that's really the idea of being able to achieve one specific goal. So that would be a machine that is programmed to be able to achieve one specific thing. Watson's a great example of that. Watson's programmed to be able to play chess and to beat the best human in the world at a chess game. Now, what's interesting about that from a specialized perspective, that's what, specialized intelligence perspective, that's what machines are very good at. But at Oh, you know, you're going ahead. That, you're killing my punchline there. Oh, OK, it's going. OK, and then generalized intelligence is the ability. So think about Watson playing chess. But that Watson, if we want that Watson to, for instance, advance those slides, it wouldn't be able to do it because it's not programmed to do that. 
but in fact, any human would be able to switch from playing chess, perhaps not very well, but playing chess, to advancing the slides. And that's the difference in what we're talking about, the difference between specialized intelligence, generalized intelligence. Now, going to the punchline of, that's what we often fear when we're talking about the future of work, is intelligence of machines replacing humans. And so thinking about at MIT, if we go to the next slide, we have actually looked at this on when will machines actually be able to replace people in doing things with generalized intelligence. So we actually, in great research process, had a postdoc who would graph this and asking the question of when will machines reach human level generalized intelligence? And that's, that's really the big question when we're talking about AI. And for the last 60 years, the answer on that has been about 20 years. So we graphed that and found pretty steadily that from the 1960s until now, that it's been about 20 years that that's coming. But we haven't gotten there quite yet. We have a lot of movies that say that. But what we think is perhaps we're entering a time where that 20-year prediction might actually come true. So thinking about the idea, the promise of general intelligence in machines being achieved. But, so 20 years, we think that right now we're in an interesting moment where collective intelligence, the idea of machines and people together, is the moment that we're in now. Next slide, please. So let's talk about machines and people working together in a different context. In thinking, maybe you can advance the whole thing. In, in thinking about, often we talk about it being machines creating a whole loop of intelligence, and we're trying to insert people into that. That's a lot of the discussion around the future of work these days, that's what we're getting. But in fact, we want to change that conversation to being the idea of groups of people working together, augmented by technology. So that's just a framework in thinking about the superminds and a supermind framework and how people and machines work together. So it's thinking, if you want to think from humans in the loop to machines in the group or computers. I call machines computers, you realize it's sort of interchangeable. So next slide. So let's talk about now how can we create more intelligent human-machine groups. With that, I want to make sure that we have a clear definition of superminds, which is a group of individuals working together in a way that seems intelligent. So let's look at another concept around that and thinking about how to frame that. The cognitive process. So let's think about the idea of, so the intelligence is, is the idea of making decisions. So let's think about the cognitive process on how we make decisions. So first is you think about you want to make that decision and you move to an action. But before you actually make a decision, you actually need to create a list of options that you're going to think about what are, what are my options before I make that decision. So you need to think about that create option. In that, you want to then, before you decide, you want to sense different things around you and you want to remember what happened before, so you don't repeat the same mistake over and over again. And then you act, and once you act, you learn. So this is a cognitive process that when we're thinking about intelligence and making decisions, is a framework to use that can be very effective. Now let's look at another aspect of this. In thinking about superminds, 
groups of people and machines working together in an intelligent fashion, you can think about different forms of superminds that help you to think about how do you frame these superminds. So one is a hierarchy. And often groups of people organized together are organized in a hierarchy. I think everyone here understands has worked in one in any organization that you've worked at. You had a boss. There were different managers. There were different people under that. Decisions are made in that fashion. Democracies are another form of supermind of groups of people working together on voting. Individual vote add up to decisions. Markets, supply and demand. Decisions are made by supply and demand. Now, communities are a very interesting supermind because they operate and decisions are made in a community by shared values and norms, reputation, and trust. We just heard about that in a number of the presentations that we just had. So think about how groups of people are organized, and now think about these different superminds together, augmented by technology, is a framework for how our world is being organized in new ways. And it helps to frame those types of things. The last one, and then you can advance the slide, is the ecosystem. And that is often different types of superminds together making decisions. And it's sort of the decisions are made in what we call the survival of the fittest, and that would be a large ecosystem. Now, those are the concepts of superminds. And that is built on a body of work from MIT that has been uh, in the Center for Collective Intelligence for the last 15 years. This is being applied in a research fashion to different problem sets on how can collective intelligence be applied to solve challenges. Some early research that was done was the past one, which was called the Climate Collab, in looking at how collective intelligence can be applied to problem solving in a major way, such as climate. So that's one that's been around since 2009. The next one is we're looking at an interesting new realm on a rise of community bio where we believe that we're at a moment in time where the biopharma medical realm is actually fundamentally being changed by new technologies. And a lot more, what used to be a siloed industry where you had to work for a big pharma or have a PhD or be a doctor to operate in, we have new technologies where people all around the world are actually um, working in community bio labs and harnessing new technologies to do things. This is a really interesting new trend, almost the democratization of biotech is happening. So we're working with a group at the MIT Media Lab that is working on this community and thinking about what are the ethics and values and norms around this community? How do we apply supermind concepts to a rising community and help to frame that? And we're creating a platform for how does collaboration happen in this type of new community and new global community. So that's just some of the work that we're doing at MIT around collective intelligence. We have a number of other projects that we're doing that we actually are working with large organizations um, such as JP Morgan and a number of other big companies that are starting to recognize that collective intelligence, crowdsourcing, these types of things are going to dramatically impact their market. And so I, I think just responding to some of the, the points on the first panel, that they are starting to really pay attention and listen. And it's going to be a, an exciting new realm in the, in the world of crowdsourcing and collective intelligence. So, Thanks a million. Check out the Center for Collective Intelligence. Buy the book, Superminds. And uh, I'll be around uh, for, the, for the rest of the evening Great. and look forward to talking to you. So thanks Thank a you very much. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Kathleen, uh, one quick question. Of course. Um, how far are you with this new framework that you are building for the platform? So we're actually, um, the framework is called Superminds. And we are building a Superminds design lab.
that is helping organizations to harness these types of frameworks and collective intelligence to be applied in multiple ways. Okay. We're working with people that are trying to do it, like JP Morgan, for a market and creating a new type of market and a prediction market. We're working with communities, such as the Community Bio, in looking at that community framework. Um, we're working with governments that are looking at liquid democracy and new forms of decision making in the civic realm. Wow, impressive. Yeah. Anyone has a question for Kathleen? Question on some of the frameworks that you've been applying. Have you found certain uh, types of superminds that are best applied to certain types of problems? And what does that actually process look like? Yes, um, that's that's actually really interesting. So we're we're looking at applying um, community in government. And so I know I noticed that there were a lot of, of companies displaying here that are sort of looking at how do you apply that in different civic realms and thinking about there already are communities, but how do you think about it from a platform perspective and apply those aspects of community and democracy together. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about, um, let's see, in the community bio realm, that's, that's thinking about something that primarily has always been market driven and looking at how are we injecting community into that. So I think what we're actually looking at in the design lab is, is how do you sort of break everything down and, and technology's allowing us to go outside of sort of the normal structures that we used to have. And what we're taking is it's not usually one form of the superminds, but it's usually a number of them together that we apply that pro cognitive process aspect to it. Um, and I try to make it seem very simple, but in fact, when we do the design lab, it's actually quite complex. But it's looking at you, you're building these different types of de decision-making processes for multiple types of things. Great. Cool. Kathleen, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um,